You ready to go? All right, great. Well, welcome to Elements Manufacturing. We're here in Santa Cruz, California, and we're a 25,000 square foot millwork shop. And because we're a little bit small, we don't keep as much material as we'd like. We really only stock plywood and melamine, and then everything else is custom uh, per job. Now, we're fortunate th that our providers are close by, Sacramento, San Mateo, and even here in Santa Cruz, that we can get stuff quickly. But it means that we've got to be real nimble in terms of our material storage because we just don't have that much room. So that's what goes on back here. Very good. That's all right. Now take your time. All right, cool. Um, so, you know, we're just forklifting material from the material handling area over to this lift table here. And from there, the operator's just moving that lift table up and down and then sliding it onto the saw. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't point out, that's a Holzer saw right there. It's beautiful. We've had it for about five years. And um, the saw is great, but I got to say the service from Holzer is also really good. It does not go down very often, but the few times it has, they've been minor things, and the Holzer team has been able to walk us through the things that we needed to do to uh, bring it back up to speed, and pretty quickly, too. So, you know, we like Holzer not, not only because of the great equipment, but you guys really do give us great service, and we appreciate that. Um, I would be also remiss if I didn't point out the operator here. This is Andres. Andres has been with the company for 25 years. So as saw operators go, he's about as experienced as they get. He really knows what he's doing, and he's a good guy. So, um, so we really appreciate Andres and, and the work that he does for us. You know, your saw is kind of the heart and soul of the operation in a lot of ways, so it's important to have a good guy there. Um, this was our first CNC machine. This is an old BSE Rover 22, and it is still functioning. It does what it needs to. You can put a full panel on there, cut shapes, do your drilling. The interface and the software is tricky. That's the only kind of barrier to getting on this machine. But other than that, this machine is really good, has done a really nice job for us. So, so we still use it all the time. And um, it's out of service, though. So servicing the rover is, is always tricky. We have to use local guys who kind of know machinery to, to manage it. Um, by the way, having this machine has given us a big advantage over the years. We were able to cut complex shapes when other shops couldn't. So this rover, when the early 2000s when we got this, really gave us some advantages that other shops didn't. You know, a lot of folks have caught up on that l lately. But So and then over here we've got our edge bander, also a holster, and uh, it's a very reliable machine. It's got cutters all the way along. It cleans up your edges and, importantly, it's PUR. And we were one of the first companies, at least we're told, we're one of the first companies in the entire state to use PUR. PUR stands for polyurethane glue. And the big advantage is the temperature, heat, moisture, just do not delaminate your edge banding from your panel when you use PUR, PUR glue. It's really good. Um, the only little downside is that you got to clean these things out every single day. And that can be a hassle if the power goes down. Clean out can be a rush and a hassle. And um, so that's the only little downside. Other than that, it's great. And the product quality, you really, you can't beat it. So we're, we're really happy with this Holter Edge Bander. This thing's a workhorse. I'm not sure, I'm not sure where the operator is right now. I guess he's doing something else, but this thing is pretty much running all day long. You will notice we've got rolls of edge banding here. Uh, we try not to keep too much of it around, but if you've got most of a roll left at the end of the job, we hang on to it just in case we need it. Um, usually we don't. Over here we've got an Omal Dowler, and uh, we still feel like doweling cabinets is the best way to do it. It's very accurate. It gives you a very strong joint. And so for commercial cabinets, uh, we've been real happy with the dialing process.
Yeah, it's an interesting machine. The dowels are pre pre glued, and it just sprays a little tiny bit of water into the hole when it drills it, and that water activates that dowel. We've got Niederman dust collectors. We've got one over there in the corner. We got this guy here, and then we've got a one down there in the far corner. We're able to dust collect on this shop with three of these machines. Fortunately, they're off right now, so it's a little quieter than usual. Um, but these machines do well for us. Yeah. And then here is our third Holzer machine. This is a Evolution 7405. And we've had this about four years, and it also is a workhorse. Of course, it's mostly drilling. It's, that's, that's its primary function, as you would expect. But it is a very versatile machine. Uh, you can do curve shapes. You can do lettering if you needed to. Uh, and we do do some complex shapes on this thing. Um, we're able to take, you know, CAD lines and convert them into the Holzer software. So they can cut just about anything you want. Now it is designed to put panel, panels in vertically. The, the widest a panel can be is 35 inches. It can be as long as you want, but it can only be 35 inches for that small opening. But, you know, just about all the time you're dealing with panels and they're already cut. And uh, so that 35 inch height really is not much of a limitation if we need to cut a full panel we do it on the on the rover over there um, the nice thing other nice thing about it is that small footprint you know you can see that it's not taking up much room and um, and that's an advantage over some of the older machines that did that yeah so let's go this way Christian of course we got uh, hinge drilling over here the doors and our, our process is, you know, we're still putting things on carts. We're small enough that we have not decided to set up conveyor systems yet. We've talked about it, but at this point, carts are still working for us. They come down into here, and when everybody's back from their breaks, they're moving carts down into here and then doing assembly. So you can see the these are lift benches. Uh, we've got a case clamp here where the case is going to the case clamp for, I think, 10 minutes or so squares them up and then uh, we're putting doors and hardware on here in the assembly area putting the boxes together yeah um so so the boxes are we're grooving them on the saw and then we're doweling them here uh, so those are the two processes for the box. And then we got a little case clamp there for the drawer boxes. I think I answered your question incorrectly. So no, they're not hitting the evolution here. Yeah. They're they're uh, getting cut on the saw and then dialed. Yeah. So, well, you know, from here then we look a lot more like a typical shop. Um, we're putting things together and still making laminate countertops, which is kind of interesting. There's not much demand in commercial for laminate countertops, but there's a little bit in residential still. And uh, so we've still got our laminate machinery and setups. Want to talk about that job? This particular job? Well, it's a break room. Okay, yeah, so this is Sobrato El Camino, and um, these to me look like fills. Um, one thing I'll point out is that these are mitered. The reason we do miter fills is it allows you to do one less visible seam at the top of the cabinet. Um, oftentimes, I don't know if this is for these cabinets or not, but if you've got a, cab you've got a cabinet top and fill on top of it, you've got two lines that it will use. You can miter the top of that cabinet and put a fill right there. You've got them driven one line. So we try to do those little things where we can. Oh, sorry, microphone. And um, so I'm just taking a guess that that's, that's what's going on over here. Um, and all, all of our cabinets, for commercial anyway, are industrial grade particle board with half inch nailers along the back, um, typically white melamine interiors, and then a lot of laminate and uh, TFL, thermal fused laminate um, exteriors.
is a small residential job over here, and that is a thermal fuse laminate. Those thermal fuse laminates are nice. They've got a texture to them. They look as good as, as regular uh, HPL laminates, high pressure laminates, but they're less expensive, they're equally durable, and the fact that they've got those textures makes it great for residential. It brings the cost down, gives them a nice durable product, and a lot of them are really pretty. Um, the wood appearance, they look like wood in a lot of cases. So we really like a lot of those uh, high pressure laminates these days, AKA melamine for residential work. As I mentioned, we're still a, we still do laminate countertops. We don't do a lot of them, but we do enough that we've kept our post forming machine. Um, and, um, you know, we can do complex shapes and things like that for these these types of tops. We also do Corian, and when we, we when we do have call for stone, which is often, we outsource that, and um, have we have one vendor that we use. They're so good that we, we just use that vendor. They're called Scantop in Redwood City, and we, we really like them. Um, I would like to point out that we use saw stop table saws, and... Uh, for shops that are using something else, I'd really recommend that you um, upgrade to the saw stop for safety reasons. A, it's a good table saw, but mostly it um, the fact that that blade will stop if it came in contact with a finger or whatever um, is really important to us. So we've been using these for a couple of years now, and we really like them. It's a good it's a good safety measure. And then one thing that uh, we're also real proud of is that we've got a full woodworking shop uh, here where these guys are doing complex benches and um, wraps on on columns and all kinds of things and they're they're super experienced woodworkers that can crank out some really nice stuff in fact here's some columns that are worth looking at You know, that, when, that, when that gets installed, that'll look like a solid oak column, but of course it's not. You notice we still have a face frame table in the back. We don't use it that much, face frames aren't uh, in demand too much these days, but occasionally they come up, so uh, still able to do that. And, you know, other traditional woodworking tools here. There's a funny old machine here. This is a straight line cutter. You basically just feed it through instead of using a table saw, and it's loud, and it's messy, but if you're doing a high volume of rips, it's a nice machine just to feed them through. Uh, it's, it's a less con lower concentration than a than a table saw. And then this is a place where cabinets come to get dusty. One thing that's happened during the pandemic is jobs will stop in the middle of the job for whatever reason you can't get on the job site. So you end up with cabinets that are just waiting for their time to be installed. And as you can see, when they get real dusty like that, you got a pretty good idea that's what's going on. Um, so. It's too bad to take up this much shop space with it, but you know this is one of the many things that the pandemic has has brought. Is you just don't exactly know when when you can get on site to install sometimes. Doing our own drawer boxes. Most of the commercial stuff is melamine. Residential, it can be melamine, but we uh, do a lot of prefinished birch drawer boxes. They just look a little bit nicer. If you like to see wood when you open the drawer. Detached toe kicks. We do a lot of ladder toes. In residential, we're doing those adjustable legs where you snap the toe kick on. It's pretty handy. 
um, if they happen to be installing themselves, they don't have to deal with the complexity of leveling the cabinets. They can just level these toe kick levelers, the little plastic legs, then snap the toe kick cover on. That's a pretty pretty cool solution. And now you've pretty much seen our whole shop. Um, you know, we're a CNC shop, but with a pretty substantial woodworking department, so we can do a lot of things.